Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm gonna do like a little quick get ready with me and one of like my new favorite like hair styling products that I got. Um, I got this maybe like almost a month ago. It's the Bedhead. Um, it's like that all-in-one like hair dryer and straightener. Like gives you like the perfect blowout. So I just jumped in the shower. You're supposed to use it on damp hair. So I wrapped my hair in the towel. And yeah, but in today's video, um, October is infant and pregnancy loss month. So I figured I do my story. It's just about been a year since um, I suffered my miscarriage. Utterly devastating. We were so excited because um, Aubrey and the baby would have been three years apart. And it was, you know, just really like we were happy. So I figured I'd go into that today. But um, I picked this up at Marshall's and it's um, hair milk. It's styling foam, so we're gonna see how that works. This is the first time I used it. I thought I lost it and I ended up finding it. So, um, just gonna get that done and I'll show you guys like how much I love my bedhead products. So I'm just gonna section my hair. Sometimes it is like really hard to like get up at the roots and I'm gonna see if I can like mute this part out just cause it's so loud. But yeah, we'll see. And if it won't mute out, I'm sorry. It'll be loud for a few minutes and then I'll show you guys when it's all done. <laughs> Just cause. Don't need that to be annoying, right? We gotta go to the market, gotta pick up stuff for dinner. And yeah. Aubrey's still in her PJs. She slept until 9.30. We just like having lazy days. And especially like when it's so crappy out looking outside. We love lazy days. So I always like brush my hair first before I go in with it, even though there's brushes. But here we go. So there's one part done already. It's still like a little bit up at my root is a little damp, but that's okay. But like, look how nice and it's so smooth, so soft. And it's just best, literally the best $55 I've ever spent. Um, I'm always a hot tools junkie. So I was looking at the hot tools ones and they were like $85. And I'm just like, mm, if it's a no go on my hair, why am I going to spend so much? So I was happy that I only spent 55 on this and it's amazing there's uh three heat settings cool low and high and i have it on high when i start it and then after um when i go back over it i put it on low and then cool so yeah i'll show you guys the final okay, so now that my hair is all done i am so hot so sweaty like i'm hot <laughs> so um now i'm just gonna go with my curology medication cream and just lather all that on. Oh, excuse me, I got the hiccups. I popped this uh, cute little pimple that was on my nose last night. I'm like, uh, girl, what are you doing here? No. 
it's just not happening. Literally, just not happening. So, okay, I'm not gonna get interrupted. So, story time while we get ready. Um, <clears throat> let's see. So, I was there. There might be like a little ramble on and on here and there, but I'm trying to like get everything together up here. Um, so around July of last year, I, um, had switched breath controls. I was on the high estrogen pill. It was making me so bitchy, like so bitchy, but it cleared my skin. But, um, it was just making me so bitchy, so irritable. All I wanted to do was eat. So I asked my midwife, cause I see a midwife, I love her. Um, I asked her if I could switch and then she was like okay well do you want iud do you want to try the nuva ring i'm like yeah i'll try the nuva ring i really don't trust those iud's i mean a lot of people have them and love them and then you hear all the horror stories um i would never get the Exponon or the depo because of all those horror stories i don't need to blow up any more than i already am so i decided to go with the nuva ring so with the nuva ring you like take it out for a week and then you put it back in for three weeks and of course we weren't practicing a safe you know so I got pregnant had no idea and then I was like I'm late like I'm late late like I took this ring out like a week and a half ago and there's still nothing but you know like sometimes when you switch birth controls that's gonna annoy me but you know like sometimes when you switch birth controls you know you don't usually get it like right then and there so I didn't really worry about it and then I took a test and sure and behold it was positive I'll be throwing up pictures um throughout this video so it was positive I'm like okay all right I just kind of like gathered my thoughts together I'm like okay I'm like I could do this we could do it we could do it it's not like you know two under two you know like a lot of you moms do and girl I praise you because <laughs> I can't do that no she drives me nuts already only one only being an only child and she's gonna be four let alone two under two and all that fun stuff like I praise you women so and I'm like all right yeah no she'll be three so it's fine by the time I have the baby because I was due in April I was actually due on my grandmother's birthday who I had just recently lost it'll be two years in January um and my due date was her birthday actually no it was like two days after her birthday her birthday was april 20th so it was like april 24th or 23rd was my due date and everybody was like so excited my family was so excited i mean certain family was so excited um and then i was working at um a organization that you you know, like you helped um, mentally disabled adults in their daily life. So you taught them like daily goals. Um, you just kind of like show them like everything to do on a daily basis, kind of. We would pick them up from the house at like eight or nine and then drop them off by like three or four. And so they kept on putting me with one particular client who I kept on saying, they're hitting me. Um, you know I am pregnant and I I don't feel comfortable and they wouldn't listen they wouldn't listen wrote it down in the client's book they're hitting me you know your child is hitting me I am currently yada 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 weeks pregnant and I and it you know I don't want anything bad to happen so I was good up until 10 weeks and three days I saw the baby on ultrasound. I'll be putting the most recent and final ultrasound up um, throughout this. And it was at 10 weeks and two days and the baby was perfect. Growing, healthy heartbeat, nothing wrong, everything on schedule. And I was like, okay, all right. Like we were happy. The heartbeat was at like 150 beats per minute and normal pregnancy in utero heartbeat is between 130 and 160. So the baby's heartbeat was perfect. There was nothing wrong, nothing going on. So I just went about my day. And they told me from the results of the ultrasound when I went in for my 13 week 
um, nucleotranslucent tests. So I don't know if like any of your doctors, if you're watching, if any of like your OBs, midwives do this um, ultrasound at 13 weeks, 13, 14 weeks, is just to see the, um, the spinal fluid on the baby's neck. Just to make sure there's nothing going on, nothing abnormal, because they really don't want to do amnios anymore. Which I get it, you know, there's risks with everything, so they don't want to do it anymore. So we were like, okay, yep. So we went to that appointment, and it was me, Aubrey, and my mother-in-law. We were so excited. Aubrey was like, I'm going to see my baby. And we're like, yeah, honey, you're going to see the baby. And they go in, they start doing it. First, they did it on top because I was, like, so far along enough that, like, at 13 weeks, you can just see up top. And they were like, hmm, we're having a hard time getting this. They're like, is your bladder full? I'm like, no, you guys just had me pee, so my bladder's not full. They're like, okay. So then she went in with the wand, and the baby was still that big. And... They're like, okay, well, well, we'll just be right back. I just have to go get the midwife. And I'm like, okay. And I look at my mother-in-law. I'm like, it's dead. I lost it. She's like, no, don't say that. She knew. She had already been through this. But she was much further along. Um, I'm like, nope, that's it. The baby died. Like, and then my midwife came in. Like, I can <laughs> picture this day so vividly. They were like, unfortunately, we can't detect a heartbeat. And I literally just shut right down. Um... I had no idea for almost a whole month that um, I miscarried. No idea. No symptoms, nothing. Nothing at all. I was growing. I'll insert pictures of like me at 13 weeks, how big I was at 13 weeks. Like, you know, nothing was going on. My body wasn't telling me anything. So then they took me back into the exam room and they were like, okay, well, here are our options. You can pass it naturally at home. You can have a DNC and we, or we give you medication that speeds everything up. And it was so much for me to like handle. I'm like, can I come back Monday and think about it and see what I want to do and weigh my options? They're like, yeah, sure. So the whole weekend I was a shell. Um, I was so depressed. I could not stop crying. I didn't want to get out of bed. Didn't want to take care of myself. Like, I've, I've, I have depression, but it's never been that severe of depression. So, if any of you guys can relate on that, like, let me know down in the comments. Um, so, it was super bad depression. Like, it was, it was awful. So, then Monday morning rolls around, I start cramping. I'm supposed to go to my doctor's Monday afternoon, like, around 12, Lo and behold, what starts happening at home, I start contracting, I start laboring, basically laboring. And I'm just, you know, it, it might be like a little too graphic in this detail, so if you don't like it, skip over. Um, and all of a sudden, like, I'm in the bathroom, and I go and sit down on the toilet, and then just everything just went, like, literally just went. Like, I came and, like, described the sound. And it was just me and Aubrey home. My mom had already left for work. I wasn't supposed to go and pick up my mother-in-law until, um, like, 11.30. My boyfriend was at work. And, because, you know, he can't miss work. I'm out of work. I was out of work for almost a month. Um, because we were going to tell everybody on Halloween that we were having another baby. Because then I would have been 14 weeks. And then I called them. I said, hey... This all happened at home. They're like, okay, no problem. They're like, you know, if you feel like flu-like symptoms, burning fever, like anything, call us and come in. So lo and behold, I did. There was an infection because not all the tissue had come out when it passed at home. So <laughs> I had to go back to Providence and have them do an ultrasound. And they're like, okay, well, we have to do a DNC. And I'm like, okay, no problem. So then I had my DNC. I had lost 20 pounds within a few weeks because it was like, yeah, like a week before like I found out that the baby had died. That's when I wasn't really having an appetite, but at that time I really didn't know. 
So I just was like, huh, maybe, you know, a lot of people, sometimes they don't have appetites when they're pregnant in this stage and whatever. Because with Aubrey, it was totally different. I'll do a whole separate video on my pregnancy with Aubrey. But, um, so then between the week before and then everything that happened and then the week after and everything else, like I dropped 20 pounds, which was very drastic. And I mean, shit, I loved it. I lost 20 pounds but I didn't like it for those circumstances. And um, yeah, they had the DNC and then they did, um, at my doctor's they do like the blood work for like the recessive and genetic traits or whatever to see if the baby could have this, could have that. And then from the extra um, chromosomes and hormones and whatever, whatever they do, they figured out, they determined the sex of the baby. And lo and behold, it was a boy and I'm like great thank you so much for telling me this as if it doesn't hurt anymore you're gonna tell me that I lost my boy everybody was so excited my grandfather was over the moon ecstatic like I showed him the ultrasound he's like oh my god he's like no way no way like I was so scared to tell him when I was pregnant with Aubrey because he basically took over the father figure role in my life um we'll do another video on that at some point but um he basically he stepped up to the plate and he raised me like his own so he's basically like my dad and he was just so happy so excited when I told him I was pregnant with Aubrey I was so nervous for what he was gonna say and all I got was don't be a scumbag and I'm like okay cool and him and Aubrey their the love for oh I can't like the love that they have for each other it's it's sickening like when I tell you they they're like obsessed if we go to the nursing home today I'll do a video and you guys can see like how much they love each other but everybody was so excited so happy and then we all just went into heartbreak um really everybody especially my mom's side of the family they were all excited because I'm, they're like, you're such a good mom to Aubrey. Why would we be mad if you had another one? Because you're already, like, such a great mom. They're like, you know, you rarely, you know, do anything fun for yourself. You rarely go out. If you do, you know, she's already in bed. She's already sleeping. Like, I was working full time, busting my butt, and everything else. So, everybody was just, like, so happy. And then we were all devastated. Um, Me and my aunt really... She, like, felt it the most for me. And me and my aunt were, <laughs> were born on the same day. We had the same birthday. And she was just so excited. And she was like, oh, my God, no. And it was, it was a lot. But, I mean, I figured I'd do this video because October is Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness Month. And hopefully someday soon I will have a rainbow baby. Um don't know when but I mean I'm not religious in any sorts but it's all up to whoever is around or whatever you want to call it um hoping it will be a boy but I just figured because it's gonna be a year that um I'd share my story it was a very um wow it was like a very hard two months I never had postpartum depression with Aubrey and still after the miscarriage I still feel like I have postpartum depression um I have my days where I'm happy and everything's fine and then there's days like yesterday I was trying to be happy while me and Aubrey were out doing stuff you know doing hay rides and stuff but I was still like just so depressed for what reason I can't even tell you um and it's also mental health awareness month as well so I figured we'd just combine the two topics together and this will probably be like my longest video ever actually no there'll probably be a lot longer videos um but yeah I just wanted to uh share my story with you guys um for all you god like for anyone who has experienced the pain that I felt like you're you're not alone 
like you are literally not alone i know so many people who you know miscarriage is still such a stigma it's really not a stigma because it really does happen um they said it could have been trauma from you know where i was working and the person kept on hitting me especially like literally right here like right here i was getting whacked every day um literally had this client almost four days a week it was a lot and i only worked monday through friday it was it was a lot and you know it really like opened my eyes like wow how can this possibly happen to someone who's a really good mom because we all know those girls who <laughs> shouldn't even be parents um they're not grown up enough yet even if they're like you know 25 30 35 almost 40 and they're having kids and they're just still not grown up enough to handle a kid I had Aubrey at 19 and a half because I turned 20 that July um because she was born in January and there was it was just really like wow there's some people who really just don't deserve to be parents and they have perfectly healthy, normal pregnancies, good kid, like, you know, healthy ass kids. And you're just like, wow, like, why is the universe screwing me over with this right now? I'm trying to keep it PG as much as I can. Um, I, I do have a potty mouth <laughs> and somebody overhears everything that I say. So that's why we're keeping it PG right now. But it's just like, you know, there are those people who don't deserve to be parents whatsoever oh my god I have the hiccups um we all know those few people who really just don't deserve it um I know quite a few or there's people who are like oh my god I'm having a baby and then they're all excited and then they're like they don't get like the dose of reality of it until they really do and I'm just like using this as examples. I know like so many people who, like I said, have gone through this. Um, and it's just, it's a really, really, really hard sore subject to talk about. Because people don't want to hear stuff like that. <sighs> they really just don't want to hear it. And you know what? It just, it needs to be heard. Like it needs to be said. It needs to be heard because... Us women who go through this traumatic experience, we can't talk about our pain because nobody wants to hear it. Nobody wants to face up to the actuality of women do lose babies. For what reason? Nobody knows. Um, especially if they're perfectly healthy, nobody knows. Like some days I still ask like, why? I should have had a six month old by now. A six month old, isn't that crazy? And we were just all so excited and then the world literally got pulled out from underneath my feet. And then that stopped me from being the best mom that I could be for a while just because I was so depressed. I didn't leave the house for almost a month. Um, if I did, I wasn't driving. Um, I just, you know, I had a lot of dark thoughts nothing towards harming my child I'm putting that out there right now nothing towards harming my child but just a lot of just dark thoughts uh I never been at that such of a low point in my whole life even though my whole life has been a roller coaster ride of emotions for a lot of reasons but I've never like really been in that much of depression and I was told by someone who is family that I deserve everything bad that happens to me because I did my life backwards. And that's just really, really sad that somebody could say that. And I'm not naming names. Gonna keep it clean. The time will come when a lot of secrets will be coming out. But... Yes, I was told by one of my family members that I deserve everything bad that happens to me because I did a lot of stuff in my life backwards. How can you say that to a person? That, that's what I just want to know. Like the emotional, verbal abuse that I've gotten over the years. 
from certain people is just absolutely ridiculous oh you look good but you could lose like you know like maybe 15 more pounds and you look even better like it's it was stuff like that like oh my god we're so proud of you but you know you're failing and you're screwing up everything like it was it's the stuff like that like i'm trying to use just like some bland examples um in some of my other videos i will go into a lot of detail about a lot of things that had happened with my life um and yeah so i mean i just want this to be like a safe space where i can just vent to you guys and listen to your guys feedback and just tell you my stories like just all about me because life is too short to be holding grudges and to be miserable your whole life and i'm trying to get out of that funk i'm gonna try and look on the brighter side of things um i just feel like i feel my depression hit a little more right now just because it's literally a year that i had my miscarriage and it was just a really devastating time. Like super devastating. And I was lost. I was really lost. But I think that I'll, I'll end this on here. So thank you guys for watching. I'm sorry if it was a little bit rambly. Like I said, you know, a lot of it will probably be a little bit rambly. But, you know, if you've experienced this, you've dealt with this. Anybody, anybody that you know who has dealt with this specific thing just tell them that they're not alone and that they can just talk to you about everything talk to you like about how they feel about it still because there's certain people I can still talk about this to and talk about my feelings and just pour it all out and certain people they they don't want to hear it it's all like a black veil over miscarriages and infant loss and stillborns and everything so if you liked my video be sure to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and turn on your bell notifications whenever I upload a new video. And thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.